The Square Ball Podcast. Hello there. Welcome to the show. It's brought to you with Levi Solicitors, this show. LeviSolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball to get your hands on a 10% discount on your legal fees as we go back to 2011, nearly bonfire night, November 2011, on this guide to it's Leeds nil, Blackpool 5, but through the eyes of Alex Cairns, who's just returned to Leeds in the summer of, of 2024. Dan here with Michael, with Dean. And where were you on this night? Because I wasn't there. I didn't witness this. I've been able to go back and check my diary and I was DJing in a bar in Sheffield on this <laughs> this Wednesday night. What did I miss? Anything? Um, I watched it from directly behind the goal where, right, right. where all this stuff happened. Um, it was It was good. I was glad I was there. It was a memorable... And in some ways, quite fun evening by the end of it because it was just so funny. You know, like how a one nil defeat can be really upsetting. Five nil is quite funny in its own way. In the end, it is, isn't it? In the end, yeah. Well, I was in the east end, um, quite close to the the cops, so I was looking across at all of these incidents happening. In a, in a different way to Michael, I couldn't take my eyes off it, but in the way that you can't stop looking at like a car crash. Um, or something that you, you think this is probably going to end very badly, but I just need to keep eyes on this because there's there's interesting things. Something's on fire. Um, turned out to be a poor man's career, um, but it gave birth to um, a Leeds legend who's now returned to the club. Yeah, it has. This one has really stuck, hasn't it? Did you get a sense in the ground that night that it was an event with a capital E? Oh yeah, I've never seen anything like it. In terms of a meltdown, I'm looking at the, looking at the timings of the goals. You're basically talking about all of this happening in 18 minutes, a man's career disappearing before his very eyes. Like he he could never play for us again after this 18 minutes, and I think that's quite remarkable to have, uh, to write yourself off in such a short period of time. The only one I can think of that did that previously was Mark Hazelwood in 1988, whenever it was when he did mm. the V sign to the cop after scoring late. Yeah, and Wilkinson took him off, hauled him off. Never played for Leeds again. Stripped of the captaincy, gone. But that wasn't a footballing reason, necessarily. No. Whereas Rob Kurt said, hey, listen, hold my gloves, watch this. I'm going to really upset you for 18 minutes because, my God. I mean, he had been rubbish before this. Because yeah. he wasn't meant to be our first choice keeper. He was meant to be Lonergan. He was injured. We've actually been doing all right. Um, Rob Kurt came into the team, instantly started letting in goals. There was one against Coventry where we'd got into injury time. He managed to give gift them a goal for them to equalise. It was, it was crap against Peterborough. And basically, every game he played, we then lost to Birmingham. I can't remember if he was at fault for that. There is a video, actually. Um, Eamon, who, who does the mag, he put together, if you search the life and times of Paul Rahubka on YouTube, he's put there's a compilation of all of Paul Rahubka's goals. And there's one of them where he goes, fair enough, that one wasn't your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but leading up to this game, he's been responsible for more or less every goal we've conceded in the, the few games we've actually had been forced to watch him. Um, and then it really peaks in this game. Well, there's a full circle of life bit here because we're sort of loosely examining this through the eyes of Alex Cairns, who was subbed on for a hubker at, at half time, which we'll, we'll come on to in just a minute or two. But he has returned to Leeds in the summer of 24 as the third choice keeper who's basically never going to play. And that's what Paul Rahubka effectively was, I suppose. Well, that's kind of, this- what, it was sort of what Alex Cairns was. Yeah, because he so, was he was he was the person who was never going to play then as well. Yeah, I suppose even the second choice keeper is really never going to play that much. If you look at like what Carl Darlow, for example, mm. barely played um, in the twenty three twenty four season. But it's it's just really interesting to note that you're kind of thrust into a different arena than just being sat on the bench, the one that you're you're used to. Probably worth just quickly rattling through the teams as well at this point. Uh, Rahobka starts in goal. You've got Connolly, Kaznobo, Lees, and White. Snoddy, Clayton, Housen, Pugh, McCormack and Keogh playing for Leeds. Um, Becchio also comes on at half-time for Keogh. Uh, Mika Verinen comes on late in the game, 70 minutes for Adam Clayton. And uh, the Blackpool team, Jilks, Baptiste, Everett, Cathcart, Craney. Yeah. Remember that guy? Mm. Uh, Southern, Ferguson, Sylvester, uh, Shelby, who was our nemesis, uh, McManaman and then Lua Lua up front. And uh, it was 7th against 14th in the Champo at this point. And Grayson versus Blackpool as well. There's a little angle on that. Are you going Lua Lua? I didn't really think about it. I go Lua Lua. I go Lua Lua. I'm throwing a little bit of... uh, Lua Lua. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 7th, we were all right. Fringes of the playoffs. Playing 14th. 
regulation win this. 2-0 at home, midweek. Just get it out of the way. Storm to promotion. Get through to the January window. Simon's war chest can be raided. Indeed. The one thing that does strike you from watching this, the highlights of this, is just how empty it looks. Like when the you, you see the East Stand, massive eight, acres of space in the corners of it where just no one's buying the tickets because I think Bates have put them up to category A over there. Um, but yeah, 22,423, which actually, it's not the lowest midweek attendance we had because um, the coming years we'll see those drop even further as we, as we go to like comfortably 15th rather than fringes of the playoffs. But yeah, that was pretty standard at the time for Ellen Road. It, it's mad, isn't it, Dean, to think how Marcelo Bielsa reignited everything at Leeds. Just, it was like flicking a switch and it feels like, I don't know if it's like we've crossed the Rubicon or something. There's no going back now to, in theory, to these days, but it depends how many 15 place championship finishes we get, I suppose. But to see Ellen Road now and the demand for tickets and admittedly, you know, capacity has dropped down to like 36, 37,000, whatever it is. Um, but still, the stadium's barely over half full in my mind there. Yeah. And yet now you cannot get a ticket for love nor money. Same division. Just yeah. but feels a world apart. Yeah, you look at that attendance and you think it just wouldn't happen now. And that's that's a testament to Bielsa, but it's also <laughs> is it a testament? It's it's a, a reason for it, a huge reason for his baits and just us not voting with our feet as we've said on this podcast before and not wanting to go to the games and even though we were seventh having dug uh, a little bit deeper into this um seventh to 14th the gap was two points it's still early in the season so we i don't think we'd started particularly well um and the the confidence from the crowd um quickly evaporates i would i would like to have i'd like to know what the attendance was at 90 minutes um mm. it, it probably would have halved but it's going to have taken a, a huge dent i stayed i wanted to i wanted to see, see the whole this. grim spectacle yeah i mean I, i'm also i'm a yorkshireman i've paid me money i'm going to stick around um and it, it, it but it there was certainly a lot of people who left lot in some ways grayson ruined it by taking rob off. <laughs> yeah. it would have been more fun to leave him on for the whole Mm, bit the, mean for the whole thing I know but you know he's going out anyway it's your, it's your final game for Leeds get out <laughs> just just make the most of it Paul get out there and, and really soak it all in you just wonder what Alex Cairns who I suppose is at this point thinking well I didn't really expect to be playing or even featuring much this season finds himself on the bench for this game what as he's 18 years old at this point 19 mm. in, the, in the January coming up for very young man what's he thinking sat on that bench not not before the goals start flying in, but just like you think going into that game, what's his what's his mindset there? He'd be thinking it's nice to be involved. Maybe he didn't expect to get on the bench because there's obviously Lonergan and then Rahubka, so he's third choice. So yeah, you you might get on the bench for a league cup game or something. But yeah, nice to be nice to be involved on a for a proper league game. Not going to come on, but you know, nice to be around the dressing room. You say that. I'm. <laughs> I think specifically in the run up to this game, having sat on the bench and watched Robka's last few performances, <laughs> he's thinking, I might, I might get a shout here. Mm. I think he might have lost a few, uh, few hours sleep the night before going Ellen Road under the lights. Because because it, it's not Thorpe Arch, is it? That's <laughs> this is a world apart. Yeah, and it was, and wet night as well. If he turned up, he's like, I've seen, I've seen Paul training in the rain. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> like the rain. <laughs> very, very slippy. Uh, got his slippy gloves on again. <laughs> well, he did, didn't he? And you wonder what Alex Cairns is thinking when he sees a fellow keeper. Because I, I know there's quite a tight bond, isn't there, with keepers? Because they tend to train away from the, the main training group. Uh, you know, goalkeepers, coaches, and I don't know if we even had one at this point, whether that was allowable um, at, a, at a boardroom level. But even still, they train them especially. They have a little group. They all hang out together. And they are a different breed of keepers. That's that's worth saying. And... Uh, whether he felt for him or he recognised it as an opportunity as these goals started flying in. And when, when did they start going in? What were the minutes on them anyway? Well, the first goal goes in on 13 minutes. And I think you you just alluded there to the goalkeeper's union. Um, I think it's getting tested in this game. <laughs> it's an awful parry. It's not a difficult shot um, that he's, he's got to come down to, to, to collect. Um, and it just parries it immediately into the to the path of uh, Lua Lua, Lua Lua. Uh, and he taps home, and it is just the worst possible start. And but bear in mind, um, we we didn't start the game well outfield either. We looked disjointed, and we've got Danny Pugh at left midfield. Like I need we say anymore? But this is this is the the perfect catalyst for a for a breakdown. Um, but yeah, thirteen minutes was when the first one went in. Did Did you feel like it was coming even at that stage? I can't remember much of the game because it was so weird in that everything that went near Paul Rahubka resulted in a goal. Like, I don't remember them being particularly brilliant. But they didn't need to be because 
and I think they was, they just realised that we're just shoot shoot at this guy. Just kick it. I've just yeah. I, while we've been talking, I've actually had the footage on of him of the goal he conceded in Coventry. <sighs> wow, <It's, laughs> the one the one in that it's basically a cross that he should just catch, and as it's coming into his chest, he sort of instead just spoons it forward and they tap it in. Um, so if they've seen, I suppose, what has gone on previously, they might have been like, look. Just get some shots in at this guy, and and footballers do do this, don't they? Like they yeah. will, they will just say, "This guy's not on it tonight." Just ping shots at him. Yeah, or if or if they realise someone is in a flap on corners, like just everyone crowd around him, will shit his pants. Um, but with Hrubka, it's quite simple. It's often that you'll come out of a game and you'll be like, "Ah, oh, shit that," but it's still better than I could do. <laughs> I'm not so sure in this. I I feel like I'd have dealt with these situations better than Paul Rahubka. Really. The, I mean, the first one, it's a shot. It's a shot. It has to be saved, but I'd, I'd feel like I would have aimed to either hold that or palm it away a bit further, but instead he just sort of lets it hit him. And then the first thing he taught as a goalkeeper, isn't it? Push it away from the goal. Yeah. Not so Not so with Paul. Is there, I, think, I suppose, at 1-0, you can almost write this off as, well, these things happen sometimes. Sometimes keepers just make to mistakes. To Paul Rohubka. Again, sometimes, and again, sometimes keepers, and again. but sometimes keepers just make mistakes. All right, he's not great. It's one nil. It's not irredeemable. Like, it's not irretrievable from here. The situation is not irredeemable. Mm. Yeah, it is. It is irredeemable. Not long afterwards, right? Because there's um, a deflected cross comes into the box. Keepers all day long. It's not even having to stretch for it. It's a. It's a, like in the in the bread basket. Just yeah. needs to put his arms down. Just catch it, Paul. Simplest thing. There's no hold that. Hold that loaf. There's no pressure on him. No. Um, I, think was, I think it was Moscow's match report at the time um, described this as like a man trying to catch a bucket of eels. Right. Um, and he, he instead just drops this ball. There's then a shot. Tom Lee's accidentally, I think Tom Lee's is harshly done to her because it, is, it does hit his hand and it is on its way to the goal. But there's no way he means to do it. Yeah. I can't remember what the handball law was at that point. Stupid. It's one that they change every year. I don't know if it's a, a straight record. It's, in a sporting sense, it's not fair right. because he didn't mean to. It just hits. It just hits him on the arm. In a lead sense, it's not fair. So then you're at the stage. A few minutes after we've the first error, we're into. He's managed to get one of our players sent off, and they also have a penalty. Which, I mean, give it is a normally guaranteed goal anyway. With Paul Hubka in net, my God, it's a guaranteed goal. Right. Well, I'm going to disagree with you. If, having watched the um, the highlights back a couple of times, I think Lee's has taken it upon himself to say, well, there will be one goalkeeper playing for Leeds today. <laughs> I think he shoves his arm towards this. <laughs> Alex Ken's on the bench sort of applauded. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're absolutely right. Like, what you just said about the goal away at uh, Coventry. It was home was Coventry. Pardon me. There were some at Peterborough that were all, it was also a fault for. It's very hard to um, differentiate between <laughs> all of these. But the goal that he, he gave away at Coventry is a carbon copy here. Um, yes, it doesn't hit the back of the net, but it's about to when the penalty goes in. Um, how he's conspired to drop that cross, I just have no idea. Mm. It's, it's harder to drop it at the striker's feet than it is to just hold onto it or flop onto it or kick it out of the, to, the, into the corner with your knee. But it just happens to just drop exactly where it needs to. And Lee's, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Lee's meant for that, and he was, he should have been rated the highest goalkeeper in the game for that for that period. Right, it's a big call. Yep. A big call. So the penalty is scored by John Joe Shelby after a retake, but then it's done and dusted. 31 minutes. And this is, again, the timing and the rhythm of this. The rhythm of goals within the game can often shape the response of the crowd, can't it? So you've seen the first one on 13 minutes, like a, which is why I was inquiring about the idea of, well, it's not irredeemable from here. Maybe we can turn this around. And you just allow yourself to think that for a few minutes, but then they score again 14 minutes later, but then it's only another four minutes and it's three and you know it's over. And it's over in every way. I can say it's, it's, and you know, we're already down to 10 at this point. At this point, the time the third goes in, you're like, this, I don't know where this ends realistically. This could be 10 nil because of the way it's going. Um, but again, it's just more of the same on this one. Just a shot straight at him. He could, this shot, I mean, he could, he could lay down and catch it. He could palm it away. He could actually stand exactly where he is and kick it with his left foot. It's straight at him. It's, it's as straight at him as it could possibly be. And he still can't do anything with it. He could have stood there and thrown a heavy beach towel over it and it <laughs> stops the ball. It's appalling. It is awful. And then when Shelby steps forward to take it around him, he just again, he just flops onto the floor and mm. says, well, go on, then have a, have a free shot. He's got strong vibes of a man who's been put in net who doesn't normally play in net. Right. You know, like when it's sort of Sunday league, five-a-side rotational keepers or whatever. You, you, you would not think this is, this is a professional goalkeeper yeah. um, at this stage. And... and 
His head is gone. I was going to say, and his head is buried in the grass. I mean, that is the loneliest, the loneliest position you could possibly ever wish to be as a as a footballer, I suppose, with the ground shouting off, off, off at you. 22,000 people, well, about 20,000 people probably shouting off, off, off. The Black mm. Bull fans laughing at this point. I can't remember the exact circumstances of, of what, it, what caused it either, but something happened in between his, that third goal and him going off. He just he just caught a ball or something and it was celebrated like a goal. Everyone was cheering it and stuff. And it, you know, you sort of feel so like... It's, it's taken half an hour to tip over into Gallagher. You kind of feel like, I know yeah. this is really cruel, Yeah. but at the same time, what the fuck have I just watched here? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm entitled to not be pleased with yeah, this. Yeah, you're a professional sport. And that's why you judged, aren't you? You judged on the basis of being a prof- professional sportsman, not able to do the basics of your job for a lot of money compared like, to what I earn. I mean him no ill will, really, yeah. but what the fuck, Paul? <laughs> 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 I, can't, I can't accept this. And on a human level, though, it's, it's yeah. a very lonely place to be when, yeah. when you're Legion United's goalkeeper in front of the cop. You've just thrown three goals into your net, basically. Um, and you, he knows what's happening. And especially when um, Simon Grayson, in his infinite wisdom, sends out our beautiful boy, Alex Cairns, to warm up. <laughs> I think he, we just said beforehand that, Alec, uh, that um, Simon Grayson has regretted that as a decision. Mm. Um, but... <laughs> It's that is the Roman amphitheater, isn't it? <sighs> it's it's the gladiators. It's the thumb up, the thumb down. <laughs> send him out, yeah. and, and it, they, the people you know, throw them a bone. That kind of yeah. thing. I mean, you could have sent me out in a goalkeeper shirt at that point, and <laughs> right. people would, people would have cheered because they'd be like, "It's not Paul!" <laughs> Thank God. I hope Paul, if he's ever searched himself on YouTube, yeah, I'm really sorry if you're watching this, yeah. but. Yeah, it, it happened. It, it happened. <laughs> it was. I was yeah. there. <laughs> it happened. It did happen. And like I said, we've got far more awareness now in the you know, mid twenties, whatever we are, um, of that sort of the human cost of barracking sports people. It perhaps wasn't as, as focused and front of mind. But would I do the same now? Then. At the same performance? I well, think I maybe would. I actually the the closest parallel I think I can draw with it is Weston McKenney, mm-hmm. who was trundling round Ellen Road and eventually it wasn't quite as bad, but people snapped and started singing You Fat Bastard at him because he got substituted in that final game and people had just had their fill of him and knew he was off, knew we were down. Time for the knives to come out. I think that's when at 3-0 it can turn because everyone knows this is it. Like you can't play another game now. People know this is the last we're seeing of Paul Rehubka. So at that point, you can fully turn. You can be like, well, we might as well enjoy this for what it is. <laughs> so to go back to Alex Cairns, what do you think he's thinking? So Grayson goes, Alex, go warm up. I, I think he's thinking... This is a proper underarm, this, because mm. uh, unless unless he goes out there and suddenly just forgets how to human, he's going to have a better 45 minutes than what's just gone before. Um, and we concede two more goals in the second half, but they're good finishes. Yeah. Um, he can do nothing about them. Um, he apparently, again, Leeds United, for some reason, didn't put out a highlights package for this game. So I was watching the Blackpool highlights um, and they uh, omitted a couple of really nice saves, apparently. Some good parries, some good catches from Cairns. So I think yeah, it's, it's a freebie. It's a proper freebie. Go out there, just just be slightly better than what's gone before and uh, it will be remembered fondly. And it is because he's back. I suppose so. That's why we brought him back because he only conceded two in the second half. <laughs> but yeah, he's a very good finish. I mean, this, the fifth goal is awful, awful defending, but Cairns is not to blame. Paul Connolly has basically just stood completely still as, is it Luala for the, oh, Shelby, isn't it, for the fifth? It just wanders in behind him, just has completely given up. Well, at just this like, point... He's also, I even think he has a, he knows he's there, but he just thinks, bah, at, nah. this, at this point, I don't know if you remember, um, Connolly was playing right side centre-back and Robert Snodgrass was playing right back. <laughs> so, of course. Recipe for disaster. Yeah. Mm. Well, that was the end of Paul Rehubka at Leeds United uh, and Simon Grayson wasn't far behind him out of the door it was only a couple of months later wasn't it two and a half months after that uh, it was the January window Simon's war chest was not opened in the way that we may have hoped in order to try and push on into the playoffs and then he departed on it was the 1st of February I believe was it around that time yeah he was he was due to be sacked earlier I think wasn't he but we managed to beat Burnley um, in the last minute and I think that bought him a little bit longer and it just bumbled on. But you know when someone's come near the sack and you're like, everyone knows this is happening. Yeah. The next the next run of two or three bad games, then this is this is all over with. And it was probably Bates wanting him to get through January so that whoever yeah, he course. brought in manager wise couldn't turn around and say, Right, we need nine players. Well, this game was us in seventh against Blackpool in fourteenth. It was Neil Warnock who came in and we finished fourteenth. So it was 
one of the many uh one of the one of the many landfill years i suppose is the best way um to describe them but final word to ken bates we haven't had ken on for a while have we no i suppose we haven't have we he's, he's still going but um hold on you need a, wet, a very wet mouth for ken i was gonna say you you say he's still going we did record this a week or two back i've been thinking that for years right yes yeah we spent over 12 million more wages more well, people blaming me for the recent results all the money we received is one way in the squad. The manager decides who he wants to pay, but we need a boy who's paid for it. I only said no once. So that was we spent over £12 million on wages. <laughs> what? So why are people blaming me for the recent results? All the money that was as clear as day. Yes. All the money we've received has gone back into the squad. The manager decides who he wants to buy. We as the board just pay for it. I only said no once. Simon Grayson has since said he was asked... That, was that, can I have any players? No. <laughs> yeah, he asked for two centre-backs um, at this point, is what Simon Grayson uh, says of this period. And presumably a goalkeeper as well, because Paul Rahubka was no longer in service. Paul Rahubka now a qualified accountant, Mm. works in sport accountancy. So there you go. Um, Can I just say, I've never seen Michael do um, Ken Bates live before. uh, And it was like seeing uh, Ian McKellen doing false stuff. So thank you very much. (laughs) There you go. Um, Rock on, Alex Cairns. We'll see you soon. The Square Ball Podcast. 